Time now for the world-renowned and famous OTR pop quiz. See, a little I piece want of proof paper. of that someday. You know, I've done this a couple of times. <laughs> yes, now, you have. And you have but not, you and you I have, have not done, done, done this. Together. Right. So I thought you were ducking me. Because <laughs> you're so good. <laughs> I don't know about you're that. You're ready to load it up. I don't know about load. Okay, so you're, you're chairman of the House and Ways and Means Committee, so let's talk money, mm -hmm. okay? Right now, which denomination, and there are options on the screen, which denomination of the U.S. currency is printed the most? Is it the dollar bill? Is it the $20 bill? Or is it the $100 bill? The dollar bill would be the most obvious, I guess, right? But, so I'm going to go B, the $20 bill. It's actually the $100 bill. Oh, wow. Which, which is just, you know, it's all about the Benjamins, <laughs> right? I mean, it's amazing. Here's another money question for you, and this is a yes or no question this time. Has the U.S. Treasury ever printed a $10,000 bill? Yes or no? I'm going to say yes. First printed in 1918 when the Red Sox won the World Series, by the way. It was purged from the currency system in 1969. And if you're curious, this is what it actually looks like. That's a $10,000 bill. The Who's picture is Salmon P. Chase, who was okay. a treasurer during the Lincoln administration. Never heard of him. Never no. heard of him? And it's a $10,000 bill. I wonder who had it. I I don't hold it. Yeah, you don't have one in your pocket? No, I didn't get one of those. All right, okay. <laughs> so um, you're a Northeastern grad, as we mentioned, so we have a beanpot question for what? you. Did you ever play in the beanpot? I never played. Okay, no, I, know. I watched plenty of the beanpot. Yeah, I right. It. Of the four colleges that take part in the annual ice hockey classic, Boston University has the most wins. Who's in second place? Is it BC? Is it Harvard? Or is it Northeastern? It is BC. It is BC. Northeastern has it, the fewest well, wins, twenty, but they've been hot lately. They had a couple good years. Yeah, we, 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 we I think we won three in a row. Yeah, it was, or was it three out of four in any yeah. event? But yeah. it's been very good. Absolutely. All right. So uh, we mentioned you're from the North End. So it's going to wrap up in the North End. Paul Revere is one of the neighborhood's most famous residents, as you know. So let's finish up with him. Known for silver, Revere also started America's first copper rolling mill in Canton in 1801. So the question is, true or false, the company that Revere started still exists today. I'm going to say true as well. It is true. Revere Copper Products is, is not around here. It's in Rome, New York, mm -hmm. but it's the same company, and it's still doing it. Very good. That's not Three bad. for four. It's I'll take it. Job. And that first, one, that first one was Manny a Ramirez that was a trick question. You may be the, four, the, so the number one it. money man or the, the, <laughs> the share that title Very with good. the Senate uh, yeah. Ways and Means guy. But um, all right, so let's get back to the serious business of what the legislature has been doing. It passed, and Governor Baker has already signed into law a climate bill that has some controversial mandates in it. No new gas or diesel cars can be sold after 2035, and 10 communities can now ban new construction that uses natural gas or fossil fuels for energy. Um, do you think there are going to be challenges to this as far as trying to implement them? Well, there's always challenges when you're, when you're implementing, uh, you know, Bold and, and broad. But do you think you know, it'll go to court? And then oh, it, I mean, it, I mean, possibly you could see something. You know, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt someone challenging it at some point. Uh, you know, in in a court setting. But I do think that you know, from the legislative stand, legislation standpoint, it was the proper uh, steps to be taking. I think we still have, you know, climate resiliency is an issue that we are going to, in the legislature, have to deal with every single year. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, and, and so this is this is another step that we took. Um, I think it was a, you know, a great step that we took, but we're gonna have to continue to work on this every single year. This is not going away just by one bill that happens. Uh, uh, of course, on one side of the country, we, there's Massachusetts and places like New York that are fairly blue, and then California just passed a bill similar, but it really sort of depends on what happens in the middle as to whether there's going to be any really effective change. Is that fair to say? Of course. I mean, it's it's uh, uh, just because one or two states or a handful of states go in one direction on it doesn't mean. And, and, and this isn't just a this isn't just a U.S. issue. This is a global issue. Mm -hmm. it just, even if the U.S. just does things, it doesn't mean necessarily that other countries are going to follow. Um, but we do have to lead, and I think Massachusetts is trying to to be a leader on this. And I think we're you know this piece of legislation is another step forward towards doing that. But before we let you go this morning, and it, it is. Sunday morning and in front of us is is the primary which is on Tuesday and there's some high stakes tight races heading into the primary election which is now just hours away so let, let's let's begin at the beginning because because you live in Suffolk County and and you're a Massachusetts resident who are who are you supporting for Suffolk DA um, I, Question one. I, yeah, I did not endorse anybody in, 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 in the Suffolk County race, Suffolk County DA race. Um, you know, I think it's a it's a it's a shame where we are in this uh, discussion now uh, with this uh, race. Um, you know, and so I've not made any endorsements. So if I asked you what was the reaction to this week's pandemonium, Boston City Council, it, it, your reaction would be? My first thought was with the with the uh, with the women that are having you know that had were part of this part of these uh, the, these issues back uh, you know 15, 20 years ago almost. Uh, you know, having to be re-traumatized by the whole the discussion. I, I really 
really feel for them uh, in that sense. Uh, but it certainly makes me uh, question, you know, the, uh, the candidacy, uh, you know, of Council Arroyo and trying to figure out exactly what to do going forward. And and, and I know that you are it's, you've endorsed Andrea Campbell, right? Yes, I have. In, in the in the race for Attorney General. Yeah. What about Lieutenant Governor? Uh, I did not make a formal endorsement, but I am going to be voting for Kim Driscoll. You're uh, going to be voting for. Kim I'm going Driscoll. to be voting for Kim Driscoll. I think uh, you know the LG seat. You know having. S been in the legislature and watching different LGs, Tim Murray, now Karen Polito, focus on the municipal side of the of, of the connection between state government and the municipal governments, uh, I think has been critical. I, I praise both of them for doing great jobs in relation to that. I think Kim, coming from, you know, as the mayor of some, uh, Salem, excuse me, will have a very, you know, uh, similar kind of pathway and will do a similar type of job, and I think she will fit those shoes very well. Aaron, thank you for your time. It's great to see you. Thank you for having me.